of our energy has been focused on um, ending chronic and veteran homelessness, but that does not mean we're, we're not working and, and pro providing supports for families or other non-chronically homeless individuals. So um, our goal is to end chronic and veteran homelessness by 2015, and we are already in the planning stages for the immediate expansion of services to homeless families and, and homeless individuals who are not chronic uh, post-2015. Um, in the meantime, we continue to provide services to those individuals. Um, and the coordinated placement system, the electronic system that uh, Mayor Parker described, will in fact work for all populations, not just the chronically homeless. So we'll be keeping real-time bed availability um, or program availability for a variety of other types of interventions for the entire spectrum of the homeless population. Is this well, something? One of the reasons that uh, last week, for example, when we had uh, discussions of uh, state housing tax credits for programs that uh, either address uh, seniors or, or the, the homeless. Uh, there's a critical need for beds for uh, single mothers with children, which is why we, we fought so hard here for the uh, Women's Home Project. We are, our immediate crisis is chronic homelessness and trying to house the chronically homeless, we have not forgotten the, the uh, uh, larger issue of homelessness. And not to bring up a sore subject, but it is not illegal to feed the homeless in the city of Houston. <laughs> I want to continue to say that. <laughs> uh, is you, can, you can share your sandwich with someone who's homeless on the streets of Houston. But the goal is, uh, is not to, that is an enabling act. And our goal is to get people off the streets. Is there something the public should do that would be uh, helpful to what y'all are doing in this regard? So with the expansion of the services at the Beacon, uh, there are a couple of things the public can do. First, we need volunteers down at the Beacon. Most of those operations are provided by volunteers. So they provide, uh, they serve meals, they offer showers, they offer laundry, and, and volunteers can come in um, early in the morning all the way through the entire day and, and help support that. So I encourage you to reach out to the Beacon. Um, you know, we continue to need uh, financial resources to help support uh, overcoming small barriers to housing. So helping with security deposits or getting an ID so that we can get that individual into a unit once we've identified that unit. And uh, we are working on a website right now that will help guide the public toward those um, different various activities and, and ways they can participate. So look for that coming in the next few weeks. Can I get your last name? Sure, my last name is Chapman Semple. Well, how do you deal with the problem that a lot of um, the homeless people will talk to yourself, talk to them in the park or even when they meet them on the street, and they have a problem when they go into a particular place for shelter, um, that first of all, um, they don't meet, meet a certain profile. Maybe they may be a black male, they may be um, um, on drugs or whatever. And then when they go, when they try to get in there, there's a limitation on how long they can stay. And then when it comes to getting medical services and other supportive services, they have to meet, meet another criteria. I'm going to ask Marilyn to address that a little bit, but uh, the shelter system and our uh, goals on permanent supportive housing are, are, are fundamentally different. This is about finding, meeting the needs of the individual homeless. You know, the, the shelter systems are designed to provide emergency stays for a large number of people for a very short period of time. They're not designed to, to, uh, to deal with people long.